Serena is one of those Pokemon where it looks and performs, well, not very good. However, I found a secret way to make Serena really shine in the OU tier. With its unique ability Queenly Majesty blocking priority moves which are ever prevalent in the OU tier right now, it can be put to good use. Our first battle showcasing Serena is an interesting one. The first battle is against Rafa Vader from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, which you should definitely join by the way if you want to battle me or other Pokemon trainers out there. There is a link in the description down below. So without further ado, I present to you the Serena video. And the battle begins. Good luck. Have fun. Rafa Vader. <laughs> They're going to lead off with Galvantula. As I led off with my Slow King expecting the Galvantula. So it's not a bad lead for us. They probably go for the Sticky Webs. So I'm going to go straight for a Sludge Bomb just to get damage on from this Galvantula. They do go for the Sticky Webs, which is fine. Let's see what we can do here with the Sludge Bomb. Let's see how much damage it does. It does a good about 50%, right? Yeah, 50%. There we go. So there we go. Okay, so we're off to a good start. They probably go into Heatran here, but I'm going to go for a Sludge Bomb anyway. They actually stay in and go for a Discharge. They're like, nah, we've got the webs up. Galvantula's not doing anything else for us now. So Slowking claims a KO straight up against the Galvantula. That's great because that's out of the way for my uh, Handoom and my Serena to come in. In comes Glimora, possibly wanting to sell more hazards. I'm going to go for a Future Sight right now. And um, they do go for a Stealth Rock, which is fine. And um, what we can do is that with the future sight is pretty good here because we can go for the future sight and we can get the KO on this thing with the uh, Glorian Slow King once again and just go for a Sludge Bomb. That's pretty much what I'm going to go for here. I'm going to go for a Sludge Bomb, break that Focus Sash, and then future sight can take it out the next couple of turns. So let's see what happens here. Let's go for a Sludge Bomb real quick. And um, they do go for a Power Gym, just get damage off on the Slow King. That's fair enough. They're very much Galvantula and Glimora seem to be suicide leads on this team, which is absolutely fine. Um, but we can hazard clear later with the defog on the no with the rapid spin on the Serena, and then they basically have to bring Fluttermane in to block that. So um, we go for another Sludge Bomb here just in case. They actually go for a Power Gym. They are letting the Glamora go down here. I'd have personally gone into Heatran at this point, but you know it is what it is. Sludge Bomb comes through, and then Future Sight comes through, and that should take out the Glamora. Yes, it does. Very nice. Very nice. So Slowking claims two souls this game. Which is pretty impressive for a slow king. They're going to go into Melanelatio, which is going to be the Flutter main. So this is actually a good opportunity for us. They do get the booster energy in there. What is it going to be special attack or speed? Special attack. So we are in a very bad position with slow king because it does get KO'd here. But it's not the end of the world. Um, like I said before, we can do stuff here. Um, I'm leaning towards, because they're, they're sticky, they've got the sticky webs up. I'm leaning towards trying to fund away bits. I'm um, seeing if we can live the shadow ball. If we don't live the shadow ball, it's fine. So where we go, we get taken out by the Flutter Main Shadow Ball, which is unfortunate. Drip Queen does go down. Starting to think maybe I should have switched out and then switched back in again to get the Regenerator, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so let's go Corv. Corv should be able to take a Thunderbolt from this thing, no problem. After Stealth Rocks. We can't Defog, because we're not Defog on this particular set, because we have Rapid Spin on Serena. So I think I go 100% for a Brave Bird here so that we can finish this thing off later. They go for a Mystical Fire. That's not going to do much, but the mirror armor is going to lower their special attack, which is actually really clutch for us. So Brave Bird comes through, should do a lot of damage, nearly KOs them, which is amazing. As a down goes Noctis, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Very quick battle, back and forth, back and forth this one is. Two down, two down each side. Okay, so do we go Swamp It? I'm leaning towards Swamp It because they have a lot, they've got a lowered special attack. I think Swamp It is the way to go, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So all Ogre now comes through. Like so. We do get caught in the sticky webs and we also get some Stealth Rock Chip, but the Stealth Rock Chip doesn't do much damage at all. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip turn just in case they switch out, which they may do. They actually go straight for a Moonblast, but they're lowered on special attack, so we're going to take that like a champ. Lowers our special attack, not that it matters, and we go for a flip turn to take out that Flutter Main, which is absolutely amazing. So Flutter Main does go down. What else we got? What's next? We've got Dragonite, we've got Ogre Pond, and we got Heatran. Heatran's going to be a problem for the Serena and the Houndoom, that's for sure. But we have got the Swamp Earth for that. Um, I'm leaning towards the Serena right now. Or the Cleavor. I'm, I'm going to go with the Cleavor switch. Because Cleavor's... I think Cleavor's a good one. I think Cleavor's a good one, honestly. So we get caught in the Sticky Webs, which is unfortunate. And we do get some Stealth Rock Chip. But I'm pretty confident that Choice Scarf Cleavor outspeeds Dragonite. Like, even after Sticky Webs, we should outspeed the Dragonite. But they bring Ogre Pond in anyway, which is fine. Um, we don't really have a switch into a Ivy Cudgel from this thing, unless we want to be ballsy and go Swamp It, but they can just go for a Horn Leech the next turn, so there's not much point. Unless we Terra Poison. 
To be fair, if we want to be immune to an Ivy Cudgel, we could... We could go with Terra Fighting here. I'm just thinking, I'm just trying to think what we need the Terra for. Terra Flying, you know, Terra Flying on the Houndoom does nothing. I say we Terra and go for x or I think that is the way to go, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to Terra Fighting and then go for x or It's super effective on the Ogre Pond. Granted, we probably should have gone for a close combat just in case they terrored, but if they terrored, it was like, whatever. Um, so let's see what they do here. So uh, they go for an Ivy Cudgel, which shouldn't take us out. Yeah, it doesn't take us out because we resisted now. We go for the X Scizor. That's going to take them right down to the Sturdy, which is unfortunate that we didn't manage to get the Stealth Rocks up earlier. I probably should have led with Cleavor. Um, but we go for another X Scizor anyway. They go for a Horn Leech. That's obviously going to take us out, and it's going to get some health back for them. They get a crit. Don't think the crit mattered at all. Um, but they don't get much health back because Cleavor is not exactly a health fanatic. So uh, Cleavor goes down, but it did, didn't go down in vain because it did take out one of the big Pokemon on that team. So now what we can do is we can potentially go Serena and get the Stealth Rock gone. And then Houndoom can come in and with its, uh, with its Focus Sash and do some stuff. So that's what I'm leaning towards. That's what I'm leaning towards. Um, so I think I will go Serena. Like I said, it gets rid of the Stealth Rocks. Um, it's got the Heavy Duty Boots, so it's not bothered about the Stealth Rocks or the Sticky Webs anyway. So if we go for a Rapid Spin, we actually outspeed this thing. So let's go for the Rapid Spin real quick. If they go for an Ivy Cudgel, can we live that, Serena? We do. Nice. And we go for that Rapid Spin, getting a special attack boost, which is a uh, speed boost, which is amazing. So now we outspeed the Ogre Pond. We can safely go for a knockoff and KO this thing. And hopefully we don't see a Heatran switch because we could have high jump kick for all they know. So I'm going to go for the knockoff, like I said. Take out the Ogre Pond, which is great and all. And after Rapid Spin, we outspeed, so that's great. I'm hoping they don't go Heatran because of the fear of the high jump kick. But I feel like they do go Heatran here. They go Dragonite. Dragonite's actually better for us. Because here's the thing, Dragonite can't extreme speed us. We get to go for a free triple axle here. They do try and extreme speed! They fell for the Queenly Majesty! No way! Please let me hit all three triple axles right now. Oh wait, what are they? Weakness policy? They're weakness policy, but we still outspeed them. We still outspeed them, which is great. Triple Axel comes through. What can we hit the second, third time? We do. Dragonite goes down to the Serena. What an absolutely awesome turnaround for Serena right there. What an awesome turnaround for Serena. That is, This is a quick game, that's for sure. But this Heatran's going to prove to be a problem. I just know it. So Heatran comes in. There is a good chance they predict the high jump kick instead of the power whip. And that they terror here because they haven't terrored yet. So I'm leaning towards the Houndoom. I'm leaning towards the Houndoom purely and simply because we're going to get that Flash Fire if they go for a Fire type move. So we're going to Cerberus. Like so. They do go for a Flamethrower, which is going to boost our Flash Fire, but they also have Flash Fire, so we have to be really careful here. Let's go for a Nasty Plot first and foremost, just to set up in their face real quick. If they go for an Earth Power, it's fine. We've got the, we've got the Focus Sash and we outspeed. So it's not the end of the world. They do go for the Earth Power. It's going to take us down to a Sash, probably. Not even Sash. The 8, 8 HP. That's cool. Let's go for a Dark Pulse and see how much damage it does. Damage at the end of the day is going to be useful here because they haven't terrored. They go for the Earth Power. That's going to take out Houndoom after we did a clean 70%, 75% with the Dark Pulse, which is amazing damage from a, a Houndoom, that's for sure. So now, it's all down to Swampert. Can Swampert live a hit? That's the real question. Can Swampert live a hit and go for a Liquidation here? I think it can. I really think it can. So they're actually going to Terra. They're going to Terra. If they Terra Grass here, Serena can finish it off with a Triple Axle. Terra Grass. Yeah, Terra Grass. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. So our, our, our Swampert is a slow Swampert. So we definitely get outsped and KO'd here by a Terra Blast. And it, it all comes down to whether or not Serena can outspeed this thing or not. Because this Heatran could, wi could win in the game. But... Like, this this game, I'm including this in the Serena video because of the Queenly Majesty thing. It's just really clutch play. And if we get the KO here by outspeeding this Heatran, then we're actually golden. So let's go into Queenly Majesty. Let's go for a triple axle just to get damage off. They do outspeed us, though, and that's going to KO the Serena. So that's a, that was a fun, quick game. Definitely worth showcasing because someone actually fell for the Queenly Majesty with the, Drake, with the extreme speed on the Dragonite, which is amazing. But yeah, GG. GG, Rafa Vader.
That was an epic battle for sure. Serena clutch living that Ivy Cudgel, then blocking the extreme speed from Dragonite 2. And that surprise offensive Heatran at the end with Terra Grass. Absolutely chef's kiss battle right there. This next battle against Yover is also a pretty good one. It's short but sweet for sure. And Serena gets some action in there too. So with that being said, let's jump straight into the second battle. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun to my opponent, Yova. So they're going to send out the leap button, the Metagross. Or is it? It could be the Zoroark, so we got to be careful of that. They either switch out here after the Metagross or they stay in in Hyper Voice. So I'm going to go for a flip turn real quick. So they withdraw the Metagross, showing that it is probably the real Metagross. And they're going to go out into Whimsy Cart, which is a really good switch being a Grass type. I could have gone for Ice Punch, but... Just going for the flip turn. Nice bit of damage. Nice choice ban flip turns coming through. They are Rocky Helmet though, so we get a little bit of chip damage, which is unfortunate. But it is what it is. So let's go ahead and switch out. Let's go into our Serena. Serena doesn't care about no priority moves. And we can go straight for a triple axle right now, which should take out the Whimsy Cart, which is great. We will get some Rocky Helmet chip, but it's fine at the end of the day. Let's go for the triple axle. They go for a Giga Drain. Trying to get some damage off on Serena, clearly underestimating the queenly majesty that is Serena. As uh, we go for a triple axle, one, Rocky Helmet, two. Oh, we got it in the two with a critical hit. Serena come through, less Rocky Helmet chip. That's amazing. So Whimsicott goes down to Serena, which is fantastic. Now they're going to go back out into Metagross, but it's probably, it could be the Metagross, but it could also be the Zoroark. So we've got to be real careful here. So I'm going to go into Corviknight instead. Corviknight should be able to take a Hyper Voice or a Shadow Ball. I doubt they go for... Well, they might go for a Flamethrower, but um, I, I, I feel like this is the Metagross. I really feel like this is the Metagross. Just a gut feeling. Agility. That's definitely the Metagross. You never see Agility hurt Zoroark, that's for sure. Um, so with their Agility up, they are looking like a bit of a powerhouse. But we are going to go straight for that Body Press, I think. I think Body Press is the way to go. They withdraw because they know they can't touch Corviknight, which makes sense. And they're going to go into the Carti, which is going to be what? The Mandibles, the Gliscor. So Gliscor comes in to take a body press. It is the real Gliscor after all. And can definitely take one. It gets that Poison Heal, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And now we go straight for a U-turn because they're probably going to go for a Spikes or something. They go for a Stealth Rock, which is absolutely fine. Now they have got two Ghost Types on their team, so it's going to be really hard to spin away these rocks. And um, So I'm going to go for the U-turn like so. And 9 times out of 10, Gliscor has um, Earthquake on it. Um, so we don't have to worry too much about that if it's the Stealth Rocks version. So I'm going to go back into Serena. And the reason I'm going to go Serena is purely and simply because I want to bait out the uh, Terra Water or the Switch into one of the Gli either, either the Dragapult or the Zoroark. So I'm going to go for a Triple Axle once again. I don't think they Terra Water here, but they could. So they withdraw. What are they going to go into? Are they going to go Metagross? Probably Metagross, right? Panzer comes in. Who's Panzer? The Mandibuzz. Is it the Mandibuzz though? We go for the triple axle. It does super effective damage. Nice bit of damage. And we hit three times, taking it down to half health, which means... Oh, that was a crit. That's why. Never mind. So we can't do that again, unfortunately. And um, we have to be really risky, careful here, because they could go for a Brave Bird. We don't want to stay in and take a Brave Bird, that's for sure. So let's get Serena out of there. They more than likely go for a knockoff here, if anything. So I'm kind of leaning towards Corviknight again. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Corviknight and then we'll go for a slow U-turn. We do, we do have minus speed nature with uh, zero IVs and speed, I believe. So we should be able to just go for a slow U-turn here, getting outsped by the Mandibuzz. So stones do dig in. They go for a Whirlwind, which is going to blow us right out of there. And what are we going to get sent out into? Hopefully the Cleavor. That would be the ideal situation, Cleavor would be, because then we can go for a Stone Axe. And uh, we get some time to Slow King, which is fine. Slow King is absolutely fine. They probably go for a knockoff here. Just in case they go for a Whirlwind, I'm going to go for a Thunder Wave. They actually go for a Protect, which is interesting. So Protect is going to protect them from this Thunder Wave. Um, it's also going to let them scout, see what we we're going to do. And they know we're going to go for a Thunder Wave now, so they probably switch out into Gliscor, if I had to guess. Uh, Gliscor seems like a good choice. So they are getting some leftover recovery every turn, which is unfortunate. Now, if we assume they're going to go into the Gliscor here, we should definitely go for a Chili Reception this turn. We should definitely go for a Chili Reception this turn. Because um, they can just go into Gliscor. So let's go for the Chili Reception real quick. They go for a Toxic, expecting us to switch, probably. Which is great, because that's not going to work on Slow King or Drip Queen. We go for that Chili Reception. We get a free switch in on the Mandibuzz now, which is absolutely amazing. Now... Question is, what do we go into? Because it looks like they've got Protect, Whirlwind, Toxic. 
And then they probably have knockoff, right? Probably. So we get a free switch into Cleavor right now, which is absolutely amazing. We get a free Stone Axe off. Um, so let's see what, what we can do with Cleavor here. Let's go for that Stone Axe. We go for a Stone Axe. They don't even protect. They stay in and tank it like an absolute champ. We get the Stealth Rocks up, and then they can go for whatever they want to go for next, which is going to be the Toxic. So Toxic comes through. So we know they're probably going to go for a Protect this turn, which is fine if they do that. We'll just go ahead and switch out now. So if we assume they're going to go for a Protect to whittle us down with the Toxic, we should definitely go into Serena here. That is for sure. So let's go ahead and do that. So we withdraw Morgan the Cleavor. And we're going to go into our Serena once again. Serena can definitely take this thing out of a triple axel, which would be amazing if we could pull that off. And um, they do go for the Protect, trying to get the Toxic, which is great. Um, they do get some leftover recovery, but it's fine. I'm pretty confident triple axel will take him out from there. We go for a triple axel. We do hit once, we hit twice, and that is all we need as the Mandibuzz goes down. So Mandibuzz and Whimsicott both go down to Serena, which is absolutely fantastic. In comes Modern Warfare 3, which is going to be the Dragapult. Going to get hurt by the Stealth Rocks, obviously. And um, we definitely 100% go into... They probably go for a Flamethrower here, so we go into Slow King. If they go for a Shadow Ball, it's not the end of the world. If there's Specs, we can play around that. And um, So let's go ahead and switch out. And then we'll go into our Slow Queen real quick, like so. There we go. Um, they probably they might go for a U-turn, to be fair. They go for a nasty plot. That's the Zoroark, is it? Ah, Zoroark. Ah, not good. Not good. So the snow is going to stop. What I'm going to attempt to do here is not recommended. I will say that. I'm going to have to, because this is an immediate threat, right? This could sweep our entire team. So I'm going to Terra Water, and I'm going to Thunder Wave it. And if we miss the Thunder Wave, we are boned. Completely boned. So let's Terra Water so that we can take a Shadow Ball, no problem. We can definitely take a plus two Shadow Ball as a Terra Water Slow King. I'm not sure about the non-Terra. Not sure about that at all. But as Terra Water, we definitely can unless it's a crit. So they do go for a Shadow Ball, which is definitely going to sting. A plus two. Not too much, actually. We probably would have lived that um, without Terra. But it wasn't worth the risk. Because Hisuian Zoroark is a threat. A big threat. So... They get, full, they get paralyzed, which is amazing. Uh, we now get a free switch out into our um, Serena. So they still outspeed us, right? So we go for a chilly reception here all the time. They go for another nasty plot. They are plotting right there. They are plotting right there. We go for a chilly reception, get our regenerator back, and we get a free switch in Serena, who should be able to one-shot this thing with the knockoff. So let's try that real quick. We'll switch out like so. And we'll go straight into Serena. And what's great about being able to switch Serena in like this is that we are able to um, be immune to the Stealth Rocks that are up. So let's go for a knockoff real quick. It should take out the Hisuian Zoroark unless they Terra. But you wouldn't Terra a Paralyzed Zoroark. And the knockoff takes it cleanly out, which is fantastic. So Serena taking out three of their Pokemon already. This is definitely going in the video, that's for sure. So in comes Modern Warfare 3. The real Dragapult comes in. Get some Stealth Rock chip. So we need to do something about this thing. Could be physical, it could be special. We don't know what it is. So I'm going to take a gamble and base the fact that it's got the special Zoroark that this thing's going to be physical. So I'm going to go into Corviknight right now. And I hope I'm right. If I'm wrong and they go for a Flamethrower right now to take us out, then poor Noctis is going to have to go down. Um, but that's fine. So Stones are going to dig in. They go ahead and Terrastalize straight up. What are they going to Terrastalize into? Ghost? Terror Blast, maybe? They could be Ghost. Ghost. Okay, so Ghost is fine. If they go for a Terra Blast here, and they're physical, because Terra Blast is physical if you're a physical attacker, Dragon Dance. So they are Terra Blast with Dragon Dance. Interesting. So that's going to get them an attack and speed raise, which is really unfortunate. We 100% go for a Brave Bird here, just to get some damage off on this thing. They actually get greedy, and they go for another Dragon Dance. I'm pretty confident we can live a plus two Terra Blast from this thing with Terra Ghost. I'm pretty confident we can live one. So Brave Bird comes through. It's a two shot, which is great. We may lose Corviknight here, but it's fine. Let's go for another Brave Bird. They go for a Phantom Force. Are they going to be Power Herb? That's the real question. Are they going to be Power Herb? So they avoided the attack, obviously. They're not Power Herb, which is good to note. Let's go for a Brave Bird and take this thing out. So they go for that Phantom Force at plus two. It actually KOs us, which is really unfortunate. 
because it means we have no way to take out this Dragapult now as it is a plus two in attack and speed. So we may have lost this game. We may have lost this game. So that is unfortunate. But you know what? We're Terra Water on you. We could take the hit. There is a good chance that Swampert's naturally bulky defense can take a Phantom Force at plus two. There is a chance. So we'll, we'll, we'll take that chance and we'll go for a Liquidation right now. They do go for the Phantom Force, which is fine. Phantom Force is absolutely fine. Liquidation comes through and does nothing. There is a good chance we live this. So let's go for a Liquidation once again. Phantom Force comes through. Swampert does not live that at plus two, unfortunately. It's not a defensive Swampert, but it has naturally high uh, defense. So I figured maybe it had a chance. Um, but that's unfortunate. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go into our... We're going to have to do this way. We're going to have to go Sloking. Sloking like this. Right? They they go for a Phantom Force, right? They go for a Phantom Force because it's Terra Ghost. So we Chili Reception out into the Houndoom. So they go for the Phantom Force there, which is great. We Chili Reception into the Houndoom. And we hope that Houndoom's Dark Typing is enough to live a Terra Ghost boosted Phantom Force from a plus two Dragapult. I don't think it is. I really don't think it is. So this game might have to be number two. <laughs> Right, there we go. We go into Cerberus real quick. I wish I was like Terra Normal or something, but Stealth Rocks are going to make it so that we probably can't live this hit. So let's go for the Dark Pulse anyway. They go for a Phantom Force. We don't live, unfortunately, which means we do get swept by this Dragapult, which is really unfortunate because Serena did so well this game. Like, it's a real shame. It's a real shame. So let's go into Slowbro again. Let's go into Slow King again. And I guess, like, the best thing we can do here is, I guess see if Sloking can live and go for a Thunder Wave. That's all I can really think to do. And I know my look will probably live and then they'll miss the Thunder Wave. So they go for another Phantom Force. It's Terra Dark and all that stuff. Um, which is fine. We go for a Thunder Wave. Obviously it doesn't work because they avoid the attack being invisible. And then this next turn we hope and pray and I really mean hope and pray that we can live a Phantom Force from uh, we're pretty much at full HP right? So we might be able to live. If we can live and get the paralysis off, that'd be great. We can't, though. We can't, though. So that Dragapult is ridiculously powerful. But you know what? Serena took out three of their Pokemon. So you know what? We're still going to include this in the video. It's a pretty pretty dope game, to be honest with you. So let's go Cleavor. It's Choice Scarfed. Not that it matters, because it's not going to outspeed. Definitely not going to outspeed here. We've got the Stealth Frox as well, so we definitely don't live it here. Let's just go for the Stone Axe and hope for the best here. They go for a Phantom Force. Obviously, that's fine. We still don't hit this attack. Stone Axe comes through. Snowy's going to stop. If only I had Go Lurk with no guard. Because if you have no guard, you can hit Phantom Force Pokemon. I bet you didn't know that. Right, let's go for another Stone Axe. And we'll just let this Dragapult finish up the game. So there we go. Phantom Force comes through. And Cleavor goes down. Now it all comes down to this. Can Serena do anything? I don't think Serena can do anything here. Because we haven't got Terra Normal, which would be really clutch if we did. We go for a knockoff anyway, just in case. They might go for a Sucker Punch or something to try and finish us off all sneakily. And then get Queenly Majestid. They go for the Phantom Force though, and that is unfortunately going to be GG, I'm afraid. As uh, the Serena team is not going to be able to pop off. But I'll, I'll play the rest of the game, so that's fine. Let's go for a knockoff once again, just in case you never know they might miss. They don't miss though, because I don't think it can miss. Phantom Von Kaeon's Serena, and that is going to be the game. So GG, that was a pretty fun one. Dragapult is such a BS Pokemon, but it's like amazing at the same time. I do, I do love Dragapult. It's, it's a, I'm a big fan. That was wild, right? Serena dealing massive damage to the Mandibles and KOing that Zoroark was perfect. Just a shame about the whole Dragapult thing, huh? Anyway, you thought the video was over right now? Nah, I present to you a bonus battle. Nothing Serena worthy, just a really solid battle I had against Mamba from the Battle Hub Discord using the Swampert team. So I hope you all enjoy and stick around till the end of the video for a rental code of the team. And the battle begins. Good luck out for Mamba. So they're going to lead off with Tony. Tony the Torkoal. Tony Torkoal. Shout out to Tony Torkoal. He's a cool YouTuber. Anyway. Drought comes through on the Torkoal. I live with Swampert expecting the Torkoal, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to Earthquake this thing in the face. I don't see any reason not to Earthquake, because their whole team is kind of weak to Earthquake. So they withdraw Tony Torkoal. They don't want to take too much damage, which makes a lot of sense. And they're going to go into off <laughs> Rule 34, the uh, Hisuian Lil... Oh, no, wait, the Hatterene. 
Let's see how well Hatterene takes this. So we go for an EQ. That is going to cleanly nearly KO it, which is amazing. So that's some good damage. And it turns out their eject button as well. So they're going to get ejected out into a chosen Pokemon, which is probably going to be the Hisuian Lilligan, if I had to guess. In comes Flower Power, the Hisuian Lilligan. Nice and shiny. Got to love it. So we're going to switch out. We're going to go straight into Corviknight. There's no real reason not to here. So we withdraw. And we've got to be wary of the Terra Fire Terra Blast here. That's what we got to be wary of, the Terra Fire Terra Blast, because it is a possibility. It is a thing. They go for a Victory Dance, which tells me that they aren't afraid of the Corviknight. Which tells me they might be terrified of Terra Blast, which is terrifying in its own, re own regard. So what are we going to do here? Do we Terra? Do we Terra Dragon? Or do we not? Do we, do we, do we, do we hard switch into, into Houndoom? We could do. Hard switching into Houndoom is not a bad shout. So I'm going to withdraw my Corviknight. They haven't withdrawn themselves, which means they've stayed in to do something. I'm assuming it's going to be Terra Fire Terra Blast. So we go for the Houndoom switch. They go for a Solar Blade on the Corviknight of all things. But that's actually going to work out in their favor because now they get to do it on my Houndoom, which is going to take us right down to our Sash, unfortunately. I was really hoping to see a Terra Fire Terra Blast there. That would have been really cool. And they are Life Orb as well, so we'd have to worry about Focus Sash, which is good. Um, however, we are going to die here, so let's go for a Fire Blast just in case. They go for the Soda Blade, and of course, that's going to take out poor Houndoom over here. As there we go, the Terrified... The, 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 the Solar Blade comes through, and that's going to destroy Houndoom. So I am still wary of the Terrified Terror Blast. I, I feel like they could still do it. But... They might be leading us into a false sense of security here. That, that's what they might be doing. So I'm going to go back into Corviknight. I don't think I need Terra for anything else. And I can just use it for this. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into Corviknight. I'm going to Terra Dragon Brave Bird. Because I'm still wary of that Terra Fire Terra Blast right now. So we're going to Terrestrialize into a Dragon type. They are actually not going to do that. They're going to stay in. They're not going to Terrestrialize. What are they going to do to our Corviknight? That's the real question. Are they just like going to close combat in the face? I mean, they're only plus one. We can definitely take that, no problem. So they do the close combos in the face. It's going to do a lot of damage, but we, we still take it, no problem. I, I really wonder why they solar bladed. Why did they solar blade? They, were they bluffing the Terra Blast fire? Probably. Probably. But we Brave Bird anyway. That's going to definitely take out the Lilligan now. Because that's one big threat out of the way. But the Lilligan did a lot of damage to our team. It took out the Houndoom. You name it, it did it. It comes two blood, which is going to be the Great Tusk. This thing can just ice spinner us in the face. It's going to get a Protosynthesis in what exactly? Speed. So speed is the Protosynthesis boost. Um, we 100% go for a Brave Bird here. We have no switch-ins, really. They go for an ice spinner. That's definitely going to KO Corviknight, unfortunately. But we do get some Rocky Helmet chip on there, which isn't too bad. Um, as now, this Great Tusk is unfortunately going to take out Corviknight. So we're, we're, we're off to a rocky start. That's for sure. We're off to a rocky start. That's for sure. And they are Life Orb on that as well. But now, I don't see any reason not to... I, I feel like Serena can live an Ice ice Spinner. But it depends whether we've got close combat or not. I think the best play to go into is Swampert here. So we'll go into its All Ogre now. And I don't see any reason not to go for a Liquidation. So I'm going to go for a Liquidation. They might bring the Walking Wake in, but I doubt it. So they withdraw. Are they going to go into the Torque Hole? Or are they going to go into the Walking Wake, maybe? Blew the treasure under. That's got to be the Walking Wake, right? Yeah, the Walking Wake comes in. That's a good play. I should have really gone for an Earthquake there, but I didn't want to risk it for a Chocolate Biscuit when that Great Tusk was such a big threat. So I go for a Liquidation in the Sun. Not doing anything to the Walking Wake, unfortunately. Um, as now we have no switch-ins other than the Sloking, so I'm going to have to go into Sloking right now. So we withdraw all Ogre now, and we're going to go into our Sloking to hopefully take a Hydro Steam like a champ. Let's see how we take it. Let's see how well we take this Hydro Steam. There's the Hydro Steam in the sun. It's not doing half, which is nice. Not doing half, which is nice. The harsh sunlight does fade. And their Protosynthesis is going to wear off. So they kind of have to switch out here, right? Do they go into the Torque Hole? I think they go into the Torque Hole personally. So I'm going to go for a Future Sight first. And then when they bring the Torque Hole in, I'll go for a Chili Reception. So they withdraw the Walking Wake. And they're going to go into Tony the Torque Hole once again. Makes sense. We go for the Future Sight though. That's going to sell up some... Uh, some little bit of a hazard for them. So Future Sight comes through. And this is going to hurt the Walking Wake quite a bit. And it'll definitely hurt the Great Tusk. So we can definitely go into Cleavor right now. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chill the reception, of course. So we tell a chillingly bad joke. We actually outspeed the tall call, interestingly. So they might have gone for a roar or something. Um, but let's see what they do. So it starts to snow. Get rid of that sunlight. We switch out. We get regenerator. And uh, we're going to go into Cleavor. We're going to go into Cleavor to get the rocks up, pretty much. Um, I'm hoping that this bait's in the Great Tusk. It's like they're only switching, really. They go for a stealth rocks, which is fine. We can rapid spin them with Serena later. They've got no ghost type. We can use the talk all the setup bait, really. Let's go for a stone axe, because I don't see any reason not to. They withdraw. What are they going to go into? Great Tusk? That'd be great if they did. Rule 34. That's the Hatterene, right? Yeah, Hatterene comes in. Hatterene comes in. We go for a stone axe. Cleanly get all them stealth rocks, taking out the Hatterene at the same time. And the future side is unfortunately going to fail this turn. But at least we got the stealth rocks up, which is always going to be useful for that Torkoal and the gouging fire. Tony, the Torkoal is going to come back in now, which is fine. I am leaning towards going for another stone axe, just because we have got the sharpness ability making it really powerful. Um, so I, I do kind of want to go for that. But at the same time, I'm like, mm, they probably go into the Great Tusk right now expecting us to do that. So do we do that or do we go Serena? I, I could go Serena. Um, Serena wouldn't be a bad shout. Swampert could also be pretty good. I think the last thing they expect us to do is to go into Serena here. So if we expect the Great Tusk and go into Serena, we should be all right. So we're going to good old Majestic. They do withdraw the Torkoal as expected. So it was a risky play, but we, we, we made good with it. And they go into Two Blood, which is going to be the Great Tusk. So that was great. And we made the right play because now they can't really go for a rapid spin, you see. They get that Protosynthesis in the speed and they, they basically have to go for the offensive against the Serena here and go for an Ice Spinner, which I'm confident we can live. So let's go for a Power Whip real quick. So they go for an Ice Spinner. Yeah, they go on the offensive. I'm pretty sure, sure we can live this. We do live that. Can we hit the Power Whip? That's the real question. Can we hit the Power Whip? We do hit the Power Whip. Will it KO? It does KO. Great Tusk goes down. Serena putting in the work like an absolute champ. That also means Stealth Rocks are up for good on their side of the field, which is going to hurt the Gouging Fire on the switch in here. They more than likely go for a Dragon Dance here. I can't really risk them doing that. So I have to go for a knockoff here. I'm going to go for a knockoff, get rid of whatever item it's got. I don't think it goes for a Burning Bulwark if it's Protosynthesis and Speed. I think they either attack us or they go for the Terror. They are going to te oh, no, or they go for a Dragon Dance. They are going to Terror though. And they're going to go Terror Fire. So they're going to go Terror Fire, which is going to be really terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Which is terrifying in its own right. They go for the Raging Fury. In the sun. And that's going to KO Serena cleanly. But Raging Fury is like Outrage. So he's locked into Raging Fury right now. Which means Swampert can just come in and KO this Gouging Fire no problem. Which is absolutely amazing. So Serena set up that situation for Swampert which is great. We can now go straight for an EQ. The damage from the Raging Fury is going to be quite intense with it being Terra Fire and in the sun. Probably going to do about a good 55% to us. As it does even more than that, about 65, 70%. So we go for an EQ though. That's going to take out the Gouging Fire, no doubt. As there we go. So Gouging Fire does go down. Lion Half is going to go down. And now we just got Torkoal and Walking Wake to deal with. The walking wake's not so bad because we do have the uh, sloking in the back. In comes Blue, the treasure hunter, once again. And I do want to keep Swampert around for the Torkoal. That's for sure. Although I do feel like... I do feel like sloking can do this. I might go for an earthquake, you know. I think they go for a Hydro Steam, but I'm, I think I'm just going to stay in anyway and let Swampert go down. They go for the Hydro Steam as expected, which is fine. That's going to do loads of damage to us. It kills us about three times, I think. And Swampert does go down. But we have Terra still. We have Terra still, and we have got the Sloking still. So let's go for the Sloking switch, like so. There isn't much point terroring just yet, because we're going to regenerate to the Hydro Steam damage anyway. So we'll go for a Chili Reception first and foremost. They go for a Hydro Steam in the sun. It's going to definitely sting, but not do too much damage. Regenerate to pretty much heals all that back. As we tell a chillingly bad joke, and then we can go straight into Cleavor. Now, Cleavor is an interesting one, because I think Cleavor is going to be the way that we beat this Walking Wake. All we have to do is weaken it, pretty much. So, uh, we'll go into Cleavor real quick. Like so. And Cle like I said, Cleavor, if we can weaken this Walking Wake, then we are golden. Absolutely golden. So, stones are going to dig in. 
We go for a stone axe 100% of the time here. And if they're choice scarf for whatever reason, which they're not, we go for a stone axe that does a lot of damage. They go for a hydro steam that takes us out. But now, they are in prime range. Prime range. For a Terra Water Galarian Slow King to come in. So let's go into, into the Galarian Slow King, like so. We're going to Terra Water just to add insult to injury. Oh, we can't Terra. We've already Terra. Never mind. Sorry, I've been saying I was going to Terra the whole time. And I can't. So let's Sludge Bomb. They withdraw. They want to get that Protosynthesis back. I think he was in Special Attack, right? And they're going to go into Tony the Sociable, which is absolutely fine by me. They're going to get some damage. We know we outspeed the Torkoal anyway, so we know we can go for a Sludge Bomb here and still get the KO the next turn. They do get the Drought up once again. Sludge Bomb comes through. Nearly gets the KO. Doesn't get the poison, but that doesn't really matter because, again, we outspeed. So we can definitely win this with Sloking right now, I think. I think this is going to be a really close game. A really close game. Sludge Bomb comes through. Down goes Tony the Torkoal. So that's great. So with that out of the way, we just have a 1v1 situation with Sloking and Walking Wake. Blue comes in. We've got three minutes left of the game. Stealth Rocks are going to dig in. Protosynthesis is going to boost its speed, which is actually fine now. I'm not as worried anymore. We go for a Sludge Bomb and we win the game, I'm pretty sure. Unless they get a Crit Hydro Steam here, we should be all right. So they go for a Draco instead. Does a lot of damage. I think Hydro Steam still does more. I think Hydro Steam still does more, you know, in the sun. But Sludge Bomb comes through. Either way, we won that one. We won that one. So GG. Mamba, that was a really fun one. Really close game. Makes an excellent bonus battle, that's for sure. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Here's a rental code of the team. Feel free to use it and let me know how it goes if you do. With that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.